Are you okay? That looked like it really hurt. Uh, who's Mitch? Just get them and get back here as soon as you can. Hello everyone and welcome to the Kids Planet here at Sagebrush Church. We're so glad you could join us today in the last few weeks of our series called Armor Up. We've been looking at the armor God has for us in the Bible found in Ephesians 6. We can be ready to protect and defend ourselves against all things evil as we armor up with God's help. Hey Kids Planet, cool party setup, huh? Aren't these swords so fun? Wow. I have the best surprise party planned for my friend Richie. I have castle goodie bags and I have a knight coming today. He's going to be so cool. His name is Sir Lifts a Lot. Richie is going to be so surprised. Surprise! Hey Cammy, are you almost here with the cake? Yeah, I'm the one by the giant castle. You cannot miss me. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you soon. 12 seconds later. I'm throwing the best surprise party ever. I seriously don't think there's ever been a surprise party in the history of surprise party that has been this good. Hey Hannah, is that you in there? Yeah, I'm in here, Cammy. <laughs> Ow! Oh my goodness! Are you okay? That looked like it really hurt. Well, it's not like it felt nice. Is there like ice or something around here? Yeah, there's ice cream sandwiches in the cooler. Here you go, Hanny. And here's these, just in case it gets all gross and melty. Thanks, Cammy. I guess I forgot to put my helmet back on. We all make mistakes sometimes, but why are you wearing this armor costume? Well, we've been talking about it for the past few weeks in Kids Planet. You know, God's armor. And I also thought it'd be a cool birthday party theme. Birthday? The decorations do look really great. And I brought the cake. Oh, I just, that's awesome. I want to see it. But, uh, Hannah, oh, wait one second. Uh, who's Mitch? Well, when I called yesterday, I guess I didn't speak very clearly, and this is the name they thought I said. Hello? Information? Yes. Aw, oh, man. I'm sorry, Hannah. I feel like I've been making so many mistakes lately. And now I've ruined your surprise party. Mistakes like what? Okay, so I got into an argument with my friend Heather last week and I still haven't found a way to apologize. Plus, I was so rude to mom yesterday when she needed help, instead of just explaining that I didn't have time right then. And I've been so busy thinking about all the ways I've been messing up that I got distracted and didn't even notice the wrong name on the cake until I got here. I'm such a failure. No, you're not. You told me before, we all make mistakes sometimes. But so many in a row, it feels like it will never get better. Well, you saw me fall without my helmet on, right? Well, yeah, it was kind of scary. Ooh, ah, that was really scary. But you would never judge me for that mistake, right? Of course not. And I don't judge you for your mistakes. You know who else doesn't judge us for our mistakes? Yeah, you're gonna say Jesus. That's right, Jesus. Jesus loves each and every one of us no matter how many mistakes we make. I know, you're right. Do you know what the Bible says about the helmet and the armor of God? Here you go. Read this. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy and the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the piece that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrow of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And we know what salvation is, right? Yeah, salvation means that Jesus has saved us from our sin. That's why he died on the cross for each of our mistakes. You got that right. 
the ultimate forgiveness and you believe that Jesus came to save you from your sins, right? Of course! Then today, try to protect your mind by focusing on God. Don't think about your mistakes over and over again. God has already forgiven you. Do you forgive me for the cake mix-up? Absolutely! I actually think Richie will find it kind of funny. <laughs> oh no! I forgot to get cups! Do you think you can go grab some for me? Yeah, you can count on me. I believe in you! You cannot tell, but I am giving a thumbs up. Eventually. Oh hey, you must be sort of looks a lot. <sighs> Cool. Well, I'm Hannah, and you're actually a little early. The party doesn't start for another hour. Uh, in impressive. I just have to make a phone call really quick. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Please, please, please. Tammy, you have to get back here. There's this guy here, and he's like really, really, really weird. Weird. Oh, I don't care what kind of cups it is. It can be from the Dollar Tree. Just get them and get back here as soon as you can. Please. enough hey guys happy birthday <laughs> surprise wow thank you more people will be here soon don't worry I must have texted them the wrong time no 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 you didn't I'm, I'm just weird about surprises and I'm paranoid about being late no that's okay it was getting weird by myself with um their lifts a lot. I must say, lesson learned. I will never hire another party entertainment with one review ever again. Well, one review is better than no reviews. Yeah, that's true, but I think that one review is from his mom. Mommy? I'm Hannah's sister, by the way. My name's Cammie. Happy birthday! Thank you. It's so nice to meet you. How about we go take a seat until the rest of the party shows up? Who's, who's Mitch? Yeah, sorry, Richie. I need to remember not to mumble on the phone. <laughs> no way, best birthday cake ever. <laughs> this cake looks so good, I can't wait to dig into it later when the party starts. Us too. You know, Hannah, I was thinking about what we talked about earlier with Jesus saving us from our mistakes and a Bible story came to my mind. Really, which one? The one where Jesus is having dinner with Simon, a Pharisee, and a woman brings perfume to Jesus and asks to wash his feet. I love that story. Me too. Do you want to tell this one, Richie? Sure. Can I tell it in my own words? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, this guy, Simon. He's a Pharisee, and like, like Cammie said, which is a super religious guy. So anyways, Simon invited Jesus to his house for dinner, and there was a woman in the town where Simon lived that everyone had labeled as bad and sinful because she had made so many mistakes. So once she heard that Jesus was there for dinner, she sort of crashed the dinner so that she could ask Jesus for forgiveness. So she bought perfume, and she cried as she washed Jesus' feet. Simon thought that Jesus shouldn't let the sinful woman touch him, but Jesus told Simon a parable to prove him wrong. Right, Jesus used a story as an example to teach Simon a lesson. Do you mind if I read that part? It's so good. Go for it. Jesus said, there were two men. Both men owed money to the same banker. One man owed the banker 500 silver coins. The other man owed the banker 50 silver coins. The men had no money, so they could not pay what they owed. 
But the banker told the men that they did not have to pay him. Which one of the two men will love the banker more? Simon the Pharisee answered, I think that it would be the one who owed him the most money. Jesus said to Simon, you are right. I always felt like Simon still didn't get the point of the story yet. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Definitely not. Then Jesus turned towards the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she washed my feet with her tears and dried my feet with her hair. And then a few verses later, Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The people sitting at the table began to think to themselves, who is this man? How can he forgive sins? Jesus said to the woman, because you believed you are saved from your sins. Go in peace. I, I never get why so many people are so quick to question Jesus, but how quick he is to forgive them. Well, for one thing, it wasn't normal for people at that time. Even today, our world often encourages us to hold grudges, stay angry, and compare and judge others. Jesus lived totally opposite to bring the outsiders in and let people who had been labeled as not good enough know that they were loved and saved. Yeah, Jesus didn't let the way everyone around him acted or thought influence what he knew what was right. He continued to love people and pointed them to God even when no one else could understand why. And the woman was able to protect her mind by focusing on God, even when others were questioning her and being mean. That is a pretty cool part of the story. I, but why does it seem easier to believe and accept salvation when we can see Jesus face to face? But like, what about right now when we can't see Jesus right in front of us? I see what you mean. Jesus told the woman himself that she was saved. So of course she was gonna turn away from her past mistakes and live differently, but how can we help our friends believe something when they can't actually see it? Exactly. I've had friends that can't understand faith in God or forgiveness from a God that they've never seen. How do you explain this kind of thing to someone like that? That's why I love 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. The verses go like this. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with the glorious inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. Oh, I love that one, Hannah. Thanks. <laughs> now let's get this party started. Reach into the bouncy house. Hey, don't forget your helmet, Hannah. Oh yeah, thanks. And the birthday boy wins. <laughs> <guess> that's fair. <laughs> Ah, young soldiers, good day, my friends. We mustn't forget thine review of the holiest of books. <clears throat> Let's go over the pieces of God's armor that we've learned about so far. First, when I was scared to drive, we learned about the belt of truth. We have to remember to buckle up with the truth of God instead of believing the lies that the devil tells us. Then, when I freaked out when my car broke down, our friend Dave, taught us about the breastplate of righteousness, which does not mean we get to point out when others are wrong and we are right. No, we learned that it is important to guard our hearts and do what's right. Then on our hike up to the rock house, Vince reminded us about the good news shoes and how we need to stand firm in God's peace. Last week, we got to see Dane and Farmington and the beautiful Castle Rock formations and we talked about the shield of faith. The shield of faith is a reminder to shield yourself with faith in God. And then today, when Cammie was so bummed about all the mistakes she made, and I forgot to wear my helmet, we got to learn all about the helmet of salvation. I know that's a big word, but it's easy to remember because salvation is just believing that Jesus came to take away all of our mistakes. So this week, when you face temptation or hard times or any tough stuff, remember, protect your mind by focusing on God. See you next time, Kids Planet.